Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the newly released Transformers Generation Selects Seacon Kraken also known as Sea Wing. Just taking a quick look at the packaging, I have decided to show you the box outside the brown shipper box, just as that's not necessarily so interesting. We've got a really cool image, almost a schematic of Sea Wing in his robot mode, as well as in his Manta Ray-esque alt form. We turn to the side of the packaging, we've got the Generation Selects logo, and then on the back of the box, we've got some of the standard legal information, as well as a Decepticon insignia. So without further ado, let's crack this open and take a look at Seacon's Kraken here himself. And here we have Kraken, also known as Seawing, opened up and out of the packaging and as he comes packaged in his Manta Ray alt form. Now this does a fantastic job in capturing Seawing's look from his original debut. We've got some really nice details such as these wings on either side of Seawing's vehicle mode. We've also got a really nice looking Decepticon insignia as well as some nice yellow painted eyes which are made up out of the front forearms of the figure. We do in fact have two of his accessories pegged in underneath the wings much like that original G1 toy. We've also got some nice yellow paint apps here on the back for where the knee sections are. And I really do like the detail on the wings as well. We can pick out these claws at the front. I do wish perhaps these were picked out in a silver paint in order to differentiate them from the rest of the wing. We turn to the underside and we do have some nice silver paint apps here on what I presume are Sea Wing's legs for this vehicle mode. And here at the back, we've got the stinger section, which is articulated. So if you wish, you can fold it in. But for this particular mode, of course, you're probably going to want to leave it out. Some really nice detailings here. You can obviously pick out here that this is the ratchet joint for where we actually combine him into the Piranacon combiner. So a really nice looking figure. Out of all of the Seacons, this was one that I was most looking forward to out of this second wave or second assortment of these Seacons. The one that I'm really looking forward to is definitely Tentakill. He looks absolutely fantastic. But for now, I honestly think that this guy probably is my personal favourite. Bringing in some of the additional accessories, here I have them in an accumulated form. So we do get this bladed spike as well as this gun. And of course, with all of these deluxe class scaled C-Cons, we do in fact get the hand for combined mode. You do simply just peg this onto the top of the head. However, I personally don't necessarily like this look too much. I do quite like how this axe here becomes almost as if though it's like a fin for C-Wing. But personally, the hand is way too big and tends to disengage the port. So I tend to just leave that off to the side. For a quick Seacon comparison, next to some of the other figures I've reviewed so far, here we have Snaptrap and Scalor. You can see here that, as I stated previously, he is more or less in the deluxe class scale. He scales a little bit more along the same terms of Scalor. So these two are roughly the same size, and obviously Turtler or Snaptrap really is significantly larger than this figure, as he really should be. But I've got to say that I'm astounded by the quality of these figures so far. And quite frankly, this wasn't a set that was on my radar at all. I had no intentions of picking these up. I got Scalor and was just absolutely hooked on the idea of these Seacons and honestly cannot wait to finish off the King Poseidon slash Piranacon combiner. Now transforming Seawing into his robot mode, it's actually fairly straightforward. What you're going to want to do is fold up the stinger at the back. We can then collapse the feet on these double hinge joints and just rotate those around like so. You're then going to want to unratchet them and bring them down on this hinge and just click that section into place and repeat the same process here. So just click that into place. Take this section now and rotate this around so that you have got the legs now facing the front and we can really begin to see how this figure is going to take shape. We can then disengage the arms and bring those sections down. Really quite a simplistic and enjoyable transformation. Get your finger now in there and try and unhook these hands which are on soft ratchet joints within the forearm cavity and repeat the same process here for this side. So just try your best to unhook these. It can be rather difficult as I stated, they are on ratchet joints. So they are rather secured in there, which is quite nice to see really. And then we can just hinge these wings up on this hinge joint and then turning our attention to this section, this small peg will plug into this port here. So bring this down and then we can open this section up which really and truly should have been opened for the vehicle mode. I'll probably showcase you that when we get back into one of the limb modes and just fold the head out, bring this down. Now we can proceed to close these in. And here we have Seawing fully transformed and in his robot mode. Now, much like when we were in his alt form, I'm really blown away by how cool looking this figure is. I love the way the wings flare out to the sides. This section here is rather blocky, but however, I do think that it blends into the design quite nicely. 
I really do like the colours on this figure as well with the aquamarine greenish type of blue tint that we've got for the arms as well as on this front section. As stated previously, these pieces should have been out for alt form. I do apologise. It is a step that can be easily forgotten. So I will showcase how that is supposed to look towards the end of the video. We've got some really nice details on the head. I'm a massive fan of how the head sculpt has been sculpted. The indentations really do define the sculpt. We've got the yellow visor, some nice detailing here for the front, even some nice detailing on the underside of the wings. And then as we turn down to the legs, we've got that same neon yellow type of paint application for the knees and then some nice sculpt work here for the thighs. So a really cool looking figure. In terms of articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look left to right, as well as up to and down ever so slightly. The arms are on ball joints as well, so it can rotate up and down, as well as hinge out to the sides. Full 360 rotation at the upper bicep, as well as roughly 90 degree bend at the elbow. The waist can do the full 360 degree rotation due to transformation. The legs are able to kick forwards that far, as well as back that far. They can also hinge out to the sides. Full 360 rotation at the fire and then finally he does in fact have a hinge joint at the knee allowing for slightly over 90 degrees range of motion so overall for articulation is rather nice as you saw earlier these can be hinged up and down to your desire we can take these weapons here and actually give these as handheld weapons to c-wing if we so choose so just porting that in and then porting this in here for this side you can just have these as handheld weapons, or we can in fact bring in the other weapons that we saw earlier on, so just separating this all. He does come with a larger blaster which has that same aquamarine green slash blue colouring that the rest of the robot mode has, so we can peg that into the arm if we so choose, or if we want to we can of course take the blade which is my personal favourite weapon due to the really metallic reflective pink paint apps that they've painted on it, and we can have him wielding this weapon as well. So definitely a really cool looking figure. Now in terms of a Seacon robot mode comparison, I will be showcasing you the entire Seacon figures that have been released so far when I get into my lob claw review. So definitely stay tuned for that. That review will be posted very, very soon. Just transforming this figure into his limb mode now. We'll start off by transforming him into the arm configuration. So you're just going to want to collapse these. One thing I've noticed, which may be due to mold degradation, is that these sections here really do not like to hold in too well. You can see that they are squeezing themselves out and they really don't like to stay tabbed in too well. You can pick out a small gap that will just keep springing open. I'm not entirely sure whether that is due to mold degradation or not, but regardless, we're going to want to pull these sections out here and then take this whole head section and fold that in and then collapse that into the side of the head. We can then collapse that back in. You're then going to want to lift this panel out and down and bring that down just like that. Fold in the hands on both sides and then these really nicely tab into the torso section via this slot and this tab here. So you just want to peg that in and then repeat the same process here and tab that in bring these wings down now and you can see that there are some slots here that will plug into these tabs here so just align that and tab that into place and then what we can do is rotate this around bring in the additional hand accessory that we got earlier on and we can peg that into the port and then flip out the thumb and here we have C-Wing's arm fully transformed for the Piranacon combined mode. Now, of course, you can take these weapons here. You don't necessarily have any place to store the blade, which is unfortunate. However, I do believe that that is going to have an essential role to play when we do begin combining our C-Cons. I do believe it will create a trident for Piranacon. Here we've got the combination mode for all three of the weapons. And the instructions tell you to simply just peg this onto the side just like that. So definitely a really solid looking arm mode. I do believe that this is the official configuration for C-Wing. He is supposed to be Piranacon's arm and he definitely does act as a really cool looking arm. You can see here that this is the ratchet joint which we can also use. It ratchets forwards and backwards as well as up and down. Once again I'll be showcasing this plugged on to Snap Trap when we get into the review for Lob Claw and then transforming this into the leg configuration. Just remove that weapon for now. We can then take these here and you're going to want to collapse you're probably going to want to move the wings out of the way to allow for clearance. Just collapse this in like so. Lift that section up, ensuring that that's straight. And then plug this section up as well. So hinge that up. Tab this into place. And then bring this down once again. Tab that in, tab that in. Take these weapons here 
and peg those back into their of configurations that we used earlier on. Take one of the feet pieces that came with snap trap and insert it into the base of the leg. And here we have Seawing in his leg configuration for King Poseidon. Personally, I think that this works just as well as the arm mode. All of these Seacons are incredibly strong. I'm just absolutely loving these Generation Select figures. They are really well done. And Seawing here is no exception at all. You can take the hands and peg this into the back if you wish to create a heel spur for Seawing, which I think is quite cool as the combined mode does get rather top heavy. Something which I've failed to mention in my review of Snapchat due to me just not knowing is that the foot actually has a ratchet joint forwards and backwards so you can in fact ratchet the foot section forwards and backwards allowing for a more dynamic range of motion when in combination mode which quite frankly is incredible now to transform this figure into his weapon mode for king poseidon it's really simplistic it is essentially just this that is the weapon mode for piranacon if you wish to have him in the weapon configuration we've got the ratchet joint here which does peg into the back of the hand so you just remove that piece here and plug that into place and then that is how he's supposed to wield this weapon when in combined mode. So really and truly a multifunctional combiner, which I think is super, super cool. So that was my review on the Transformers Generation Selects Takara Tomy Seawing, also known as Kraken. Personally, once again, I'm really impressed with this newest release by Takara Tomy. These Seacons are selling out from retailers immediately here in the UK, and I don't even believe that they're available in the US yet. I do believe Hasbro Pulse has in fact delayed them. I'm not entirely sure as to the reasonings behind that, but if it is anything to do with the amount of demand that is for this figure, I can definitely foresee that. This figure is selling out, and all of these Seacons are incredibly impressive. Earlier on you heard me mention that I didn't flip out these panels so this is what it looks like when we have him in his alt form. They just add an extra bit of black definition over the arms in order to make the head look more complete. So definitely a really impressive figure. Personally if you can track him down I highly recommend him. I cannot wait to get the review for Lobclaw done as I can't wait to show you the combined mode of what we've got so far as quite frankly the combination mode to me is definitely where these figures shine the most and it looks absolutely incredible don't get me wrong i think that all four of the modes that this figure have are really well done or should i say all five of them if you count the gun mode it's just that that combined mode really does have a presence to behold and due to the unique color scheme it really does pop on a shelf i hope you enjoyed my review if you did please let me know down in the comment section below and until my next review i'll see you then thanks for watching